Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy, and we have some more NFL DFS picks and lineup advice for tonight's single-game showdown slate, Monday Night Football, between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. In this 10-minute video, we're going to talk about lineup constructions for low-risk and high-risk contests, our top plays, injuries, everything you need to know to build a profitable lineup for tonight's showdown slate. If you like what you see here, make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notified whenever we go live or upload any new videos here to YouTube. Give us a thumbs up if you want to see more showdown content. And if you have any questions, comment on the video below. Or the better way, join our Discord server. Click join right below the video. Be able to talk to other OccupyFantasy.com staff and members. So let's jump right into it. Eagles, Cowboys. Eagles about a three and a half point underdog on the road in this divisional matchup. Higher total game. Let's start with low risk contests. Now, if you know, if you read our showdown guide, we talk about it in every showdown video. We want to try to lock up all the scoring in most cases. Now, sometimes there are some running back pricing issues uh, or there are some teams with uh, receivers who dominate targets. We talked about it, Devontae Adams, earlier this season. And this Cowboys team is a little bit similar where we have two receivers in Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb specifically. Let's take a look here. As we click on C.D. Lamb in his games, we see uh, 24 targets through two games. Insane. And then we look at Amari Cooper. A little bit less targets last week, but 22 targets through two games. So these two guys are averaging more than 10 targets per game. Whereas Zeke is not getting the work that I think most expected to start the year. Uh, 18 opportunities last week, 13 the week before. And we know that targets are worth more, especially on DraftKings and PPR scoring. So... The move here might be to play those Dallas receivers instead of Zeke. Now, if we look at the Philadelphia side of things, Miles Sanders, and we see kind of similar numbers for him. He did have 20 opportunities in week one, but in a game where they trailed and they could, and I think, again, we're looking at low-risk contests where we're trying to predict what is most likely to happen. Philadelphia is likely going to trail in this game if we go by the median outcome based on their three-point underdog status. And the game they trailed last week against San Francisco, Miles Sanders was limited to just 15 opportunities. Offense could have been going. Kenneth Gainwell got some opportunities. Uh, so he makes it a, a tough low-risk play at his price as well. So really what you want to try to do, we think the best way to approach a low-risk contest, especially if you're playing head-to-heads, is to play both quarterbacks and these top two receivers. Now, that gives you $1,700 left per player, and that makes it really difficult because there aren't really any mispriced guys. We saw Trey Sermon on the Sunday night slate. We've seen A.J. Dillon before. Nobody's really super cheap because the the second, the the 1B running backs in these offenses, Tony Pollard, Kenneth Gainwell, are priced up. Kenneth Gainwell is 5K. Tony Pollard's all the way up at 7,600. So the best way, you could probably captain one of the receivers. If we captain, let's say, Amari, that's still 2250 left per player. That's not a ton, right? So what you could do, and something we do like to do, in our low risk contest. If it's a high total game, we don't mind captaining the kicker to get uh, access to all the high salary guys in our flex spot. So if we captain Greg Zerline on the, the favored Dallas team, that's $8,800 left per player. We could easily fit these guys in now. So that might be the way to go tonight. If it's a lower scoring game or a projected lower scoring game, we like to use the defense at captain. But tonight, it may be the kicker captain that allows us to unlock everything we need for our contest. Let's hop over to FanDuel, and it's even harder over here, right? We want to lock up scoring even more because of the half-point PPR scoring, but the pricing is going to dictate that you have to leave some of these guys out. So Hertz at 16.5, Prescott at 16K. The next highest-priced player is all the way down at 13K, Amari Cooper. So if you did go two quarterbacks, two running backs, you can't because that's $4,500 left per player. So low risk is extremely difficult on FanDuel tonight especially. What you probably have to do here is play, it's really tough. It's really tough, right? Because you can't play the receivers like we want to on DraftKings. We don't get the salary savings by MVPing a, a lower, a cheaper player because there's no salary multiplier on FanDuel. So it's tough. It's really tough, right? Zerline makes a ton of sense. That's 92.50 per player. But then you have all these guys in the mid-range. So it's super, super tough. You absolutely have to get Hurts and Prescott in, right? I think that's the key here. Hurts, Prescott, figure out the rest. That's all you can do in FanDuel low-risk lineups tonight. 
All right, let's go back to DraftKings. Let's think about high-risk contests. Uh, these are our leagues, our GPPs, our satellites, anything where the, co the, uh, the payouts are exponential. Let's go back over here. And as I was preparing for our premium podcast this morning, as I was preparing for this video, preparing to write our daily plug for this afternoon, uh, I was running a bunch of lineups just to see what is possible, what I think the field is going to do. And it's, it's pretty clear that because of the lower volume in the Eagles passing game, because Hertz runs a good amount, because of the split backfield, a majority of lineups tonight are going to be Dallas heavy. I'm talking four Cowboys, two Eagles. Five Cowboys, one Eagle, going to be very popular because we have all these guys on Dallas that are intriguing, right? Both tight ends, three, four receivers, both running backs, obviously Dak, the kicker. So we're going to see a lot of lineups like that. So to me, the easiest leverage tonight is to play multiple Eagles in our lineups. If you want to get to the top of the leaderboard, and I've had great success doing it this year, we've had uh, eight slates so far, eight showdown slates. And I've had a top 0.1% finish in four of the eight. A 50% top 1% rate is nuts. It's insane. And I've been looking at a lot of the underdog type constructions. And uh, the Eagles, this sets up perfectly uh, for them to capitalize on that type of construction tonight. Because we have Jalen Hurts, obviously. The, both running backs we've talked about are already going to go lower owned uh, because of the pricing, because of uh, the, the efficiency of the passing games, especially on the Dallas side. But... The Philadelphia receivers are interesting captain options, interesting flex options. Uh, Devonta Smith, if we had underperforming wide receivers this week, he would be near the top of the list. Uh, we, we need three weeks of data. We only have two weeks of data. But again, we like his opportunity in this passing game. He's our favorite captain option tonight. So if you play Devonta Smith and then Jalen Hurts and get at least one more Philly player in there, get at least three. Uh, if you get four, now you're really cooking. No one's really going to do that. Um, so you have Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Rager has also been getting an opportunity. We see him with five targets last week, six targets the week before. Quez Watkins, we know, has big playability. Uh, we, we saw it in the preseason. Uh, he had two catches, 117 yards last week. We know his big play opportunities. Uh, that Both tight ends. The running backs, like there are definitely definitely ways, and really how this probably happens is uh, a lot of the volume goes to one or two Dallas guys. So maybe CeeDee Lamb dominates opportunities. Maybe it's a Zeke game. Maybe Amari dominates opportunities. That's probably how we get to a eagle an Eagles-heavy construction. So there's something to think about. On FanDuel, we see Prescott having the highest MVP popularity. Hertz won't go that overlooked, 15% or so. Really, I think Hertz is probably the best option here without going too crazy. And if you want to get really crazy, again, the the week three underperforming wide receiver who we can't really tab as an underperforming wide receiver until next week, which, by the way, I'm super excited about. Uh, Devonta Smith, you can get really crazy with here. <clears throat> the other option, as we talked about, we know running backs are pretty likely to end up as optimal MVPs on FanDuel. Uh, the next most likely, in fact, after quarterbacks. So if Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott fail to be the MVP tonight, then this is how you should think about high-risk contests. If this doesn't happen, what does that mean? That means there's likely some stolen touchdowns from the running backs, right? And Zeke and Miles Sanders both are going to be sub-10% at MVP. Very rare that we see guys that are at least this involved in both the passing and the rushing game around the goal line uh, go that lower owned. So maybe that's the way to go. If you're if you're playing the, the largest GPPs on FanDuel and you want to avoid the popularity of Hertz and Prescott at MVP, I think the running backs are, are interesting, interesting options. So that'll do it for this video. I uh, appreciate everyone listening. All of our full thoughts can be found in our daily plug. The link is in the description below. It's normally posted by 2 or 3 p.m. Eastern on Mondays and Thursdays. So if you're not, if you're watching this before then, just hang out, uh, check back this afternoon for that link. Our Occupy models always updated with projected ownership, rankings for FanDuel, and DraftKings. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Get notified when we go live. Upload videos, five, six, seven videos a week now, so you don't want to miss those. Our Million Dollar Mission series will return tomorrow night on Tuesday. I had a big hit on Sunday, so we're breaking down those winning lineups and answering your questions about NFL DFS strategy. Do not miss that show tomorrow night on Tuesday. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Any questions, again, comment below or hop in our Discord channel. We are happy to answer them. So Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy. Appreciate you listening, and good luck tonight.